You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Tears. Oh my goodness. Can you hear me, people? Yes, you can. Don't lie. No lying on this show. The number's 910 no lying. What the hell do you expect? Some say that karma is a bitch. Karma is a bitch. Some say that karma is a bitch. Yep, that's right. You're listening to Truth on Tap. This is my friend here that uh, stayed in a haunted hotel. Uh, she may have been scared, but can you imagine if she found in her closet a midget Arab with a bomb in his underwear? Holy shit. What, what would she have done? Well, we've got just such a man here tonight. Uh, our guest tonight is a, uh, a short uh, Arab comedian. You, you know those dirty guys. They get on planes and light their shoes and blow up. Uh, planes and and they're just terrible people aren't they terrible horrible people uh and he he's going to challenge me as a white um superior american imperialist um because we're just the greatest people of all uh how about it ramsey uh give me your best shot what's going on with you tonight um well you try to but most of the time you fail if we're talking about uh <laughs> If you're talking about old Dick Reed, who couldn't get it lit and got jumped by a bunch of us supreme whiteies, uh, oh he didn't yeah. even get his shoe yeah. lit, you know? Um, it's funny because one of my jokes is that as a short person is that I live in the cupboard, I shower in the sink, and I travel by shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> See, see how mean he's being to me, y'all. See, this this proves that they hate us. This proves that they hate us. You know, he doesn't see. He he doesn't he doesn't see how supreme we are and why we should rule the world. And we just have to teach them, you know, one by one. These these dirty Arabs. I mean, what are we going to do? How else are we going to reach them? Uh, you went. You lived over in Jordan, and is it Jordan or something like Jordan? Because y'all always be changing shit on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was Oman or Amman? Or well, there is Oman, which Oman. is the province, but Amman mm -hmm. is, the, is the capital of Jordan, which is Amman. the neutral, because it's so close to Israel, it's mm -hmm. the neutral zone. That's why 400,000 Syrians are living in Jordan, and um, mm -hmm. they've only had one terrorist attack, and that was in 05. Okay. And that was actually while I was living there, and my uncle was actually a chef mm -hmm. at the hotel where the, there was a terrorist attack and I saw from my window all of, you know, the, the scene unfold and the cameraman and the police and I went there and there was blood everywhere and Oh my gosh. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, you know, it was two blocks. I was at the third circle. It was actually at there's a, the Hyatt at the third circle so we walked there and uh, I didn't even know that my uncle was working there until I saw him uh, when he came back from the Middle East, and he was telling me how mm -hmm. he was in the kitchen cooking, and, and the bride and the groom, and everyone, there was like 40 people that got killed, and there was blood everywhere. And yeah. So that was the only terrorist attack uh, in, the, in Jordan, which is where mm -hmm. um, my family was from. Yeah. Um, it was only 4% Christian. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's a big deal there, you know, if you're Christian or Muslim, and... and uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like Muslim now is like the new N word. You know, you're like you're not allowed to say it. It's, it's, it's almost become, it's almost it's almost becoming like that. It's, it's almost that stupid. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you are you uh, a professed Christian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to Christian school and I mm -hmm. chaperoned in my church. And, yep. Uh, I, I have I have two funny stories. One about my church and one about having, uh, I have two jokes about what, what we're talking about. Fire, fire away my dirty Arab friend who's going to blow up the plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, actually, three. Okay. Two, all right, about the, about the underwear thing. What do you call, uh, or what, what has 43 teeth and is hiding a monster? Uh, my ex-wife's vagina. My zipper. <laughs> I'm not hiding a bomb in my door. But uh, I wanted to mention, um, what's crazy is that, Kevin, is that um, mm -hmm. the terrorists in the Oklahoma 
Paul Bonding in, I think, in 99. His yeah. name was Ramsey Albin Ship. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy because he's, you know, right. And then the, one of the one of the one of the guys in the in the 9/11 um, was named as Ramsey Yusuf. That's um, right. So um, it's, pretty, it's pretty insane to think that you know we all me and those two terrorists have shared the same name because mm-hmm. for me, you know, everyone said, "Oh, where were you on 9/11?" Uh, I was awake and bacon at, at the University of Iowa. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> It, does, uh, it doesn't ring a bell for me. I must not have read that. Yeah, that was the only good part in that book, um, mm-hmm. the first 60 pages. But anyway, mm-hmm. like, it was just, you know, it was just, it was just, I, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it was mm-hmm. just so reality shattering for me. Yeah. Um, Did you feel like a target at that moment? You just knew? That's right. have to do i just need to tell the people that are listening um first of all i just upgraded the show therefore we we are not limited to half hour episodes one two right now all i can do is take calls over my speaker phone so the audio quality is suffering i'm trying to adjust it so that you can at least hear what ramsey's saying um and three it won't take me long to finally beat this technical challenge of getting people to be able to call in and co-host or be guest where their voice is just as high quality as as the speaker 
So, but that's going to take some time because I've been doing tutorials on this stuff. I've been studying it for a week and I can't get it. And I'm an electronics guy. It's just insanely hard. So I'm working on it. I want you to know I'm working on it. In the future, we'll probably route calls through Google Voice, through the 9110 no lying number. Now, because it is kind of hard to hear you, Ramsey, um, why don't you tell us again about the site where you do the book thing? Because I'll repeat to them so that we're spelling it right. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, it's stores.ebay.com slash boost literacy. Okay, it's stores.ebay.com slash boost literacy. Yeah. yeah, mention that you heard me and Kevin mm -hmm. on, um, on Truth on the Tap. I'll get mm -hmm. you. You could have any, any book mm -hmm. in the bookstore for free. Mm -hmm. Kevin, please choose uh, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, I have books on cocaine. I have books about man cow, books about Dracula, mm -hmm. uh, whatever uh, rocks your boat. Mm -hmm. And one last thing, I hold raffles every day because mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of a move and I'm finding a lot of cool things. Mm -hmm. uh, brand new items I raffle every day on Facebook.com slash Ramsey's Twice. Okay. Um, you know, Ramsey here and I may become a regular show. It, it depends on how his schedule's looking. Mine's always open. Um, so, you know, this power-mongering, uh, tall, white, goofy, imperialist American uh, will, will regularly be... Jack Dawn uh, with the short, dirty Arab who, who's going to blow up the plane. And, you know, I'm always, I, I love doing impromptu stuff. Uh, so I thought maybe I'd use a little sound effect here just to take you. I'm going to, I want to, I'm an author. And that's another thing people are wrong about. Authors do not make money. Oh my God. I'd rather be a comedian if it comes to the money. Uh, you know, I've got four. Well, I appreciate that. They're all four fiction books right now. I've written six total, but I've only published four. And I'm lucky if I sell a book a day, you know. And if I've got them priced at 99 cents, I'm making like 11 cents. So you can do that math. I'm working a month to buy a pack of cigarettes. Well, I, I, I didn't take any commission. It was just for you making me part of your show. Mm -hmm. I could sell your book. I could host it. I have 500 stars. I have 100% trust rating. That's awesome. I have an IP eBay, eBay member. Yeah. yeah, so anytime somebody searches the book, my, my, my uh, because of my trust mm -hmm. record, it, mm -hmm. it's always at the top of the, uh, like mm -hmm. I sold an iPod the other day in like 13 seconds, and okay. it was for $85, I, mean, I don't mm -hmm. know how expensive those things are, but yeah. $85 is a lot of money. All right, so for those... For those listening, let's imagine, um, here, here's Ramsey. Now, Ramsey has taken a seat on the aisle. He, he's in seat 12E, and uh, we're airborne. Here we go. Yeah, we're, we're moving. Uh, now, you can't hear this, Ramsey, but what the sound effect is playing is an airplane cabin. Uh, he pulls out a lighter. He's got a wick sticking out of his shoe, and, and then he, he tears the wick off. And uh, throws that away because he's got a wick hanging out of his zipper that's a bigger wick. And everybody really wants to have a big wick, wouldn't you say? Uh, size does matter. Uh, personally, I've got a pretty big freaking wick myself. Now, he's getting ready to light his wick, um, but his wick, his wick is soft and he'd rather it be hard. So he's playing around with it, trying to get his wick hard uh, so that it'll stand up and, and get hotter. And uh, anyway, he lights his wick on fire. He lights his wick on fire, and you see it zzz, is coming down to, to a zipper. What's going to happen here? Zzz. So you tackle him, and you try to put it out, but you can't put it out. So you have to pee on him. You have to pee on him to put it out, and you put it out, and they arrest him. That's why you got to watch these crazy Arabs, man. They're out to kill us, man. Don't ever trust an Arab. You can't trust an Arab. Um, I hope my fans are seeing the irony here because most of white America is goddamn ridiculous when it comes to being stereotypical. And uh, you got to judge each person individually. Don't look at an Arab and say, oh, no, I, I got to better touch my wallet and make sure it's still there. Uh, and don't put him anywhere near a plane. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he's going to get in the White House like Obama, that Muslim. And, they, and then they're going to make us a Muslim state. Oh, no. You know, that, that's kind of what we're doing here. But we're going to do it in a fun way. We're going to slash and jab at each other. Uh, because apparently... Yeah. Apparently, that's what the world wants, isn't it? They're, we're always at each other's throats because we don't understand, you know? Yeah, 100%. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and for the audience, um, you know, 
Kevin was not actually on the plane, but he was so he's so tall <laughs> that he could actually see what was going on. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, I would uh, kick your ass, but I can't mm-hmm. kick that high. See how he does? He He's always abusing me, y'all. He's always abusing me. But what's funny is he was on the plane sitting in a booster seat. That's what a lot of people don't know <laughs> because of how short he is. <laughs> Kevin so tall, he tripped over a rock and hit his head on the moon. Oh, damn. Yeah, well, that would explain a lot. You know, the, the oxygen is thin at this altitude. You know what I like to do when people say, how's the weather up there? I spit a loogie in their eye and say, it's raining, bitch. Uh, you know, call that a day. You know what they say, inside mm. every short man is a tall man doubled over in pain. <laughs> well, that's becoming me, my friend. I have, I haven't told you this yet, but I have a severe lumbar spinal arthritis and moderate arthritis in my right knee, so I am usually doubled over in pain, to be honest with you. So I am becoming right. a short man. Well, uh, I, I would say, Kevin, that you're, you're a godson because mm-hmm. you, you not only is this sh- in the name of your show, a godson that, mm-hmm. you know, shoots um, on tap, I mean, mm-hmm. there's really no better title. Like, mm-hmm. for my I never repeat a joke, people are like, oh, you should call it riffing, or you should call mm-hmm. it I never tell a joke, or you should call it, um, I, I, you know, you should call it off the cuff, you should call it mm-hmm. uh, become a comedian. Um, yeah. But, um, but, you know, telling the truth is, is, is it's what it was. It's what makes the man. I mean, Tony Montana yeah. said it. You know, all mm. you have is your word. And, That's right. You know, and, and uh, mm-hmm. so I think that um, I think you're right. It's a very important subject because, like I was saying before our show, you know, um, there's a lot of hairy, sensitive, and sticky situations due to uh, you know, you know, some, you know, the Arabs they own the oil companies, and and there's. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure if, they, if that's our, that, that's a sort of Damocles, you know, hanging over our head or not, but yeah. um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, hairy, sensitive subjects and a lot of arrogance, and, you know, the culture there, it's, it's everything's from right to left and for up, left to right, and so you're right, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's, just, there's just so much arrogance. Yeah. Uh, we were saying before the show that, you know, when Americans go to a third world country, they're arrog- They're not arrogant, but they're just. Everybody expects what they see in Hollywood. I mean, it's That's I've right. traveled all over the country. It's, it's across the board. People see me. They see America. They see Hollywood. They see money. And so, God bless the people that go overseas and they can stand their ground. But, um, um, so you know, we have we have to regulate. But you know, the the arrogance. You know, when I was I was just visiting the Middle East at a radio interview exactly one year ago, um, and there was eighty thousand um, Jordanians that were hmm. that were uh, in the they were protesting against the uh, you know the patriarch you know the, or hmm. the monarch the monarchy having just one uh, leader you know and yeah um, and there, everyone was very very respectful of King Abdullah you see his picture everywhere in McDonald's like hmm. six of him in McDonald's, it's pictures of him in Burger King, and, uh, but it's just, it's just that there's, you know, like I said before the show, there are about, even my dad agreed with me, they're about 60, 60 years behind, yeah. and, um, and like, you know, and, and I'm not here to, to, to tell people what to do, or, or you know, mm-hmm. or to, to try to, to try to save the world, but I, I did invest, um, a lot of money, uh, there, to, for a, uh, comedy club, mm-hmm. And, you know, even during out, during the investment, people were saying, you, you might never see this money again, you know, and it was five grand, and people were like, yeah. you know, you can't do a comedy club and, and make fun of religion here, you know, and mm-hmm. you can't do a comedy club and make fun of the king, you know? Yeah. You know, people say, oh, you're a Chicago comedian, you can't go and say, you can't go to certain neighborhoods and do this and that, but that's what I do. I have been beat up before, mm. you know? But it's just that, it's just that, I feel safer in America mm-hmm. and being in a third world country mm-hmm. and having a comedy club there. And it, it's ridiculous to think that, hey, I would say a Muslim joke and then I can't even walk to my car. Yeah. You know, to, to think, you know, even people in Chicago, they call Chicago Shy Rock because it's just as dangerous mm-hmm. as, as, uh, as it is in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, but I think, it, you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic for, for peace in the Middle East, and I think it will happen. 
Yeah. Uh, I think that we just, it just might take a few more years. Yeah, I feel the same way. You know, <clears throat> this is something that the, the whole truth angle, a lot of people think when they get news, they, for one thing, the media in America loves the divisiveness right now. They love it. That sells commercials. Um, you're getting the left monster against, against the right monster. And it used to not be so bad. We all kind of hung out around the middle. It looked like a bell curve. You know, we all kind of hung out around the middle of uh, conservative and liberal. And you had your people outside of the standard deviations. Uh, but now th it, it almost looks the opposite of that. You know, there's a few people in the middle. Uh, and you got a bunch of people polarized. And they love it. So the Rachel Maddow fans are just ready to rip the throats out of the Bill O'Reilly fans. The Keith Oberman fans are ready to punch Glenn Beck in the nose. This is the divisiveness they want, and it's working. It's working. And when you have a show like I have, um, you're going to lose some of that fun. I got to promise you, because we're telling the truth. And the truth is that most people think deep down in their heart far more toward the middle. America, as I said in my first book, Name of Alt, which is about an alien who's trapped on Earth, so to speak, he says humans tend to kill anything they don't understand. And our history is replete with examples of that. You know, you, oh, we just got to a new land, somebody wearing feathers on their head, kill them. Kill them. They probably don't even do our religion, kill them. They don't eat our food, kill them. They don't know our music, uh, slaughter them. So, that, that's sad because all we have to do is take some time to gain understanding and every religion has extremists and those extremists are capable of great horrors you know you can get a Timothy McVeigh on the Christian right and you can get the Osama bin Laden on the on the Muslim right and that's just gonna happen there are what seven billion people in the world and the numbers are climbing fast we should be around 11 billion by 2040 which is supposedly the cap for how much food we can produce and support people the, you know the more people you get the more anomalies you're gonna see and there are certain people who hate our country and we're a target you know and it's not just because we're at the top the one on top always is a target but it's also because they view us as the world's bullies and they view us as imperialists that want to take 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 now I hope that with shows like this and other people writing truth, the BBC gives pretty good news. It's kind of dry, oh but it, God, amazing, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of dry, but it but it's true. Yeah. You know, they're they're accurate and they don't seem to have a big slant. Once in a while, I'll catch a left leaning slant, um, and just on occasion, I'll catch something to the right. But I'd say 95% of what they're writing is just coming from the factual angle. Just here's what happened. And we need a lot more of that. But that doesn't sell. So how do we know the BBC will stay that trustworthy, reliable source of solid information, you know, on international news items? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I was watching this movie. It's it it with um, Billy Zane. It was called The Wolf. But something about him being in Iraq. Yeah. Where there were um, Taliban and, and he, this, Amer this, mil this uh, veteran, and I used to work for the Special Forces uh, for online healthcare, by the way. Oh, wow. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. But anyway, um, you know, in the movie, this, this veteran, this military veteran, looks this Arab woman in the eye, and, and she's like speaking in Arabic, and he tells her, you know, it's the, Ara it's the fault of the Arab woman. Yeah. So it's, not the fault of, it's not the fault of anybody else. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so I, you know, I don't know, you know, you know, I don't want to get in, into, um, something I don't know too much about. Yeah. Uh, but that, you know, um. Well, you can, because this show doesn't have any rules. You can talk about something like you know about it and not know shit. It's cool. But all I'm asking is that we try to keep it real, keep it honest. You know, there's a lot of people that say they're keeping it real, but they don't, do they? They put that sugar coating on, <laughs> you know, they, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Arab women, you know, that I, I love them for the reason that when I was in the Middle East, um, they are very, you know, when, when here, uh, right now, between men and women, there's this kind of polarization, like you were saying, but there, Arab 
women are, even between Muslim and Christians, they're very friendly and nice, and, and they hug you, and they hold your hands, and they're always by girlfriends, boyfriends, and it, it's, a, I don't know if it's because I was American, but I was there learning Arabic. Yeah. But what, what I love the most is that, you know, they're becoming more Western, and you see a lot of these music videos that you see with, like, Mariah Carey, where it's just like, wow, I don't see what, what kind of, is she really wearing clothes, I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> more Western yeah. There, and my grandma, she was, and my aunt would like throw. They would, they would turn the channel. They would not want me to watch this soft porn. They wow. Say, it. It's that so conservative of it. I respect that. I mean, I, yeah. I, I really, tremendously respect uh, Arab women and, and, and what Queen Rania and has done. You know, coming on mm. Oprah and um, you know, bridging the gap. I mean, she has done. Uh, an incredible job uh, bridging the gap and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and being open-minded. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I think that's what, uh, um, I think that's kind of the most pro- progressive, mm. uh, that, that's the most progressive way to be, is, is yeah. to, have, to have an open mind and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and not lie. That's basically what I mean. Um, but yeah, I, I, I 100% agree that, you know, mm-hmm. America is, is the best country, and it's mm-hmm. not because I, I'm an imperialist, it's just that I'm more patriotic, and, mm-hmm. and I, uh, you know, the, you know, the thing is, is that, Kevin, is that <laughs> my dad's a psychologist, and yeah. but the crazy thing is, is that, you know, you have a dad at the doctor, and makes a lot of money, but he's very strict on me, so I, mm-hmm. you know, I'm getting the same amount of money, I've worked for him for 16 years and never got a raise, which is fine, I'm not, you know, whatever, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to start complaining, but yeah. um, I'm happy with that, you know, I, I've been secure, but mm-hmm. um, the funny thing is that any time I go anywhere, everyone's like, dude, you're rich, you're rich, I'm like, you're a fucking jerk off, <laughs> 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 I mean, I make just as much as you do, but mm-hmm. my dad is rich, and so you're, yeah. you're milking that, you know, and, yeah. and so I've always had to deal with that I come from a uh, from like an upper class wealth because I don't like I, I I've never asked my dad for money since I was 18 and then I went on a camera trip with my brother and my dad gave 50 bucks and I literally had to wipe away a tear wow like, I was, like, this, this, yeah I was mm-hmm. like this is just something just weird about this yeah but um so um well, you may be rich, you know. Uh, you're going to be a famous comedian. We we most certainly need more people representing the Middle East and America. And what better way? You know, here's how my comedy history looks. Uh, I'm back in high school. I meet up. I don't care too much about comedy. I meet up with this friend through another friend, and he is absolutely hilarious. I mean, he's 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 Jim Carrey incarnate. And he, he did get voted class clown when we graduated. He was that good. And... Uh, so I was hanging out with him, and I just loved it. You know, I loved comedy. Well, once I left high school, and him and I went our own ways, and I joined the Air Force, uh, funny wasn't such a big deal to me anymore. And so, you know, it stayed that way for, I don't know, uh, I guess 20 years. So I'm, you know, I'm 41 now. I was probably 37, 38. When my back pain and knee pain started getting extremely bad, I had to find something to help improve my mood and outlook on life. And I turned to radio comedy. Um, listening to comedians on the radio constantly. Anytime I was doing something on the computer, I was listening to comedy. And so now I realize not only can it lift your spirit from a very deep and dark place, but it's a great way to dive into the differences between cultures and bring the truth out of it, you know, because there's a lot of truth in comedy, just like you find a lot of truth in fiction, you know. And yeah, that's true. And, and my mm-hmm. doctor actually said uh, when you suffer, the best your best therapy is, channel that pain into art. Yeah. You know, and Irma Brombach was saying that there's um, there's no difference between comedy and pain and, and humor and truth and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and even Woody Allen says that comedy is tragedy plus time. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, I never, I would have never imagined, um, I'm 30, mm-hmm. um, and I, I just wanted to mention, I, I, when I worked for the, uh, it's called Best Prevail, an online health care yeah. uh, for, for veterans. How, how, do, you, lost, uh, which how do you spell that? Best Prevail, uh, V-E-T-S, and mm. then Prevail, 
Oh. Oh. Right. And my boss was named Rich Gangler, who was in the Air Force, and he actually bombed uh, one of Osama bin Laden's uh, boats or something, something like that, and he uh, he, he <coughs> force crashed or whatever, crash landed mm-hmm. um, there, and then, you know, so, but I, I worked with um, not just people in the Air Force, you know, yeah. Yeah. A couple of days ago. Um, yeah. But, um, what else? What else were you talking about? Um, we, we were just bullshitting, and I, I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing because if comedy is one of the primary ways to get to understanding, and it is, if you look at how many young Americans get their news from CNN or Fox or MSNBC and compare that to how many young Americans get their news from uh, Jon Stewart, you'll be shocked. Comedy, comedy is a way to transmit political and international news, and it's it's a good way. I'll tell you what, uh, Ramsey, why don't you take a break if you need to go get something to drink or do your pee pee thing, and I'll throw on a song uh, from my favorite band, which is a local band here, Bad Ace, and this will give everybody time to take a little a little break, and uh, we'll resume here in about five minutes. That sound good? Yes. All right. Well, let's do it. Here it is. Your love by Bad Ace. doing to me and you don't know the way you make me feel what it does when you get back Here. 
Your Love by Bad Ace. Um, th those are some bad sons of bitches, aren't they? You can find them on Facebook as well. Uh, Ramsey, are you there, my friend? Yes. Yep. We and, this. Uh, please do not reach out your window and uh, and try to slap me because I, I know that your arms are that long. See, see how he does, y'all. And now this is why these damn Arab, these little Arab bastards. This is why we have to go round them up and send them all over to Syria so that Assad can gang rape them. Uh, terrible, terrible people, these Arabs. We've got to get them out of here. And I know Glenn Beck's listening right now going, yeah, he's right. Uh, he's really right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what would you like to do? <laughs> yeah, damn Arab midget. What, 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 what would you like to do to white people? What, what, what does the angry Arab want it? <laughs> What what does the angry Arab want to do to white people if, if he could push a button and make it happen? <laughs> oh man, push a button. Was that part of the joke? Sure, why not? Yeah, well if you could push a button and angry white Americans who hate Arabs would something would happen to them, what would happen when you push the button? See, uh, you know, and that's why I'm going to hell, probably. Uh, plus, all my friends are there. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, but Ramsey is so short. He he went out, and his mother was wearing a yellow dress, and he thought it was a taxi cab. Climbed him, said, "Take me to the airport." H how about that? <laughs> <laughs> You're the comedian, Ramsey. I'm, I I cannot compete with you on comedy, brother. Uh, but but I'll throw a joke out once in a while. You know what the hell? <clears throat> yeah, no, that was, that was good. That was good. Well, I, I think I have to hear it again. But or I might need a little bit of work. But yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Well, I stole the joke. It was your mom's so fat that she was wearing a yellow dress, and two guys climbed in and said, "Take me to the airport." So I <laughs> so I stole it. Yeah, your mom's so dumb. She sits on the TV and watches the couch. That, that's bad. That's bad. Northern Africa. Yeah, and uh, well, that word translates to two black girls. It does? Yeah, because Aswad is one black girl and Sudan is plural. Uh huh. I mean, two or more black girls. Okay. W was that the joke? It's not the funniest joke. Well, no, I mean, I have, I have another joke, but I don't want to get, I don't want to get 
Well, I, I can't let you get away with that. Uh, we got to let the crowd boo here. Yeah, everybody's hearing the crowd boo. This is a sound effect. Uh, you, we got to hang you on the bad jokes. Okay, but what's the next one now? <laughs> I'm in a full that. Oh my God, this this short Arab, you guys, uh, he's he's rising. And tell me about these shows now. You were doing these interviews. Is this something where you are doing self promotion and getting on the shows, or are people coming after you, or is it a little bit of both? Yeah, man. I mean, this is my nineteenth radio interview in, mm -hmm. in four different countries, or five, including the U.S. Mm -hmm. And people would call and be like, "All right, we'll just." Tell us about I never repeat a joke. Yeah. Like, and then I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, like, I was on the radio with Peter Stollard's cousin mm -hmm. two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was on an interview with a Playboy Playmate. Wow. And people are just like, well, you never repeat a joke, well, let me hear it. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is that people, people will call and be like, instead of saying, wow, you know, uh, like you, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, you know, I was nominated by Funny or Die. Um, my most mm -hmm. recent video, I, like I said, I have no advertisement. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's the catchiest video, a 30 second mm -hmm. video. My latest one is of my business partner who suffers from autism. He's kicking me in the ball. <laughs> Ouch. And yeah. I, heard, so I, I guess I have a high tolerance for pain. But yeah. it, has, uh, it blew up on, on um, Funny or Die. It has like 800 hits. Mm -hmm. Only on Funny or Die because my mom and they don't want, they don't think it's um, attractive or whatever for other women to think that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that I don't want to have kids or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's only on Funny or Die because I had to hide it from her. Yeah. Um, Why, why do you do it? Why, why is that? Why never repeat a joke? Has, he, has anybody asked you that? I can't. I, I had, I, okay, there's one joke on video 33 that I repeated. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I was talking about this last night. I said, um, you know, I, I do a lot of Barack Obama jokes because, you mm -hmm. know, I just Chicago, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. get people's attention. Right. That, you know, Barack Obama um, was handed a mess. Hey, hey, that's good. 
But I mean, but but I don't understand why. Why would you avoid telling one joke again? I mean, if you've got a good routine, you know, like it's weird to me. I don't understand the motive. Is it because it's unique? To well, some, some people do say it's kind of like a form of terrorism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, but I don't know. I mean, you know, you go in front of two hundred people. You know, mm-hmm. you uh, you, you're just gonna black out and just be like. Mm-hmm. But I, I, maybe it's, it has a little bit. Uh, dude, I just can't do it. I, I just I tried to repeat a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has nothing to do with trying to take the, the you know bookers mm-hmm. or bookers who book comedians in the comedy clubs. They get really mad at what I'm doing because I'm pro- providing entertainment. I've been at three different comedy venues. Yeah. People could watch it at the comfort of their own home. Mm-hmm. A lot of bookie bookers are really, really, really angry with me. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to, to step on anybody's toe or, mm-hmm. or feet or steal, steal anything from the pie or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just that, um, I just, you know, it's, it's a new age, digital age. There's a lot of trolling, there's a lot of depression, there's a lot of people, social media, Twitter, Facebook, have forced people to be funny. Yeah. And a lot of people are left in the dark. Mm-hmm. And I've had eight, comedi- eight people that have never tried comedy come on mm-hmm. my show. Right. You know, and I can name them all right now. And so I'm providing an outlet for a lot of these trolls and a lot of these people that are not getting <clears> the attention that they think they deserve. Right. So, I'm, you know, it's not, it's not the, the age of comedians like Andrew Dice Clay and, and repeating yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, right now it's more like, all right, I'm the king of the hill. You, you have, you, I, I have no other card to play. So I started in 2010. I forced all this coming. And so maybe that's why, you know, I'm just trying to mm-hmm. be loyal to my fans. Right. It, it just sounds odd to me. I, I've never heard anybody come from a format of, like, I couldn't imagine a musician saying, I never play the same song twice. You know, it's like, why not? If you got a good song, you know, that's what the average person is thinking. But if that's your angle, I, I say you did already have an angle. You're, you're a short Arab comedian. That, that's a hell of an angle right there. But if you add into that, that you never tell the same joke twice, then I guess you have, you know, icing on the cake with that when it comes to uniqueness. Well, like, mm-hmm. like, kind of, like, in Chris Riley's in Time Boy, like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, Indi- uh, Jojo, the Indian circus boy, you know, <laughs> like, I, I just get so excited before a show, even if it's 200 people, you know, and I perform in front of all types of people, mm-hmm. like I said, all across Illinois, um, and I just get so excited, and, and honestly, every show gets better, I, I don't mm-hmm. know, even, it doesn't matter how many people are at the venue, or, mm-hmm. you know, two weeks ago, I made fun of a bunch of music. I made fun of Miley Cyrus mm-hmm. and uh, Nas and Eminem and uh, Master mm. P. It was hilarious. And yeah. There was only five people in the crowd. You know, three of them were people that came with me. <laughs> Four was a distraction in the host. Yeah. So, um, but every show gets better. It really does. You know, mm. it's not about the material. It's just about me evolving. Mm-hmm. And you know, somebody else said I should call my my show instead of an ever repeat a joke. I should call it Rise to Fame. Yeah. But it's not about that. It's just, you know, I guess I'm just trying to send a message. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, ultimately. What is your ultimate message? When, If you had to summarize your comedy's life journey in one sentence, how would you do that? Yeah, thank you very much. That's an excellent question. And, mm-hmm. and thank God for, for excellent questions. I've been, I had a lot of interviews that the mm-hmm. hosts were just, 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 just uh, wretched. Yeah. So, my ultimate message is that, you know, when I was born, I used to, I used to have about four crayons. They draw color everywhere. Uh, you know, I, I just always used to be into the arts. And every day, man, I used to realize more and more that, you know, and I, as I said, as I travel and people look up to us because, you know, we're from the land of Hollywood, I just, every day, and even as a teacher, I, I, you know, I teach online, mm-hmm. every day I realize the importance of knowing how to Hollywood's crashing, you mm-hmm. know, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas predicted in a year that 
movie tickets are going to be a hundred dollars each. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's imperative that one knows how to succeed as an artist, and, and yeah. for me to create another avenue as a comedian or mm-hmm. as a tragedian or ho- however you want to call it. Maybe I, maybe I'm not a comedian. Maybe I'm it's called something else. You know, mm-hmm. court gesture or something. Mm-hmm. The people, the people, and I'm doing sound effects here that you can't hear right now. I'm doing applause for that because I thought that was good. And uh, there we go. Uh, how about a bowling strike? Because uh, I think I think he did get a strike there, or at least picked up a spare. Uh, so, so you know. But let's look a little bit more. We know we know what your goal is now, and and the horse that you're riding to the finish line. We know what that horse looks like now. But you're doing something so unique, being an Arab comedian in a very hostile country right now toward Arabs in general. You know, that's that takes some balls. One, two, it's highly necessary to bridge the gap between the traditional scared white American who wants to protect our ownership of America. And you hear it all the time, we're losing America, we're losing America. No, we're not losing America. America is growing. America is evolving. That's what she does. And it does not belong to old white men. It belongs to a free people. And they are all as important a part as anyone else. So you're representing, you know, I don't know how much of a credit you put into the, the fact, but you're representing a very important group. You know, that no one else is representing. Like you said, there's no other Arab comedians. You know, and I can't yeah, think I can't think of a sure. better way to to get in there and create understanding between your typical Arab person and your typical American. Yeah, and it's kind of scary because, you know, you know, comedians are, are referred to as comics and, and, and a very popular comic is Spider Man and, and in that movie they say, you know, a great responsibility responsibility. Yeah. And I don't want to think of it as uh, my calling or, or me trying to fulfill a duty or having a responsibility, although I accept it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to think that, like it's a Truman show, like I have no choice or whatever, but yeah. I, I, like I, it's something that I know I can do and that I'll, I'll do, um, I'll, 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 I'll do another repeat joke. Mm-hmm. You know, up to 100 or 200 or 300 or 1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when I went, to, I pitched the idea to my show in Hollywood, mm-hmm. the Madhouse Entertainment, mm-hmm. and they said the same thing. They said it's so important to have an Arab, mm-hmm. a missionary comedian doing this. Yeah. You know, because they have the outlet, and you have, and I have the, I understand the virtual reality of the internet, and mm-hmm. I know how to, I know how to orchestrate very well. Mm-hmm. Um, social media. Yeah. And so, if you, you know, you may be like things at the right time, because, you know, timing is very important, you know, the sky's the limit. And, yeah. um, I, I just think that, um, you know, they, and, and so when I was pitching it in Hollywood, they said that if I get to a million hits, they'll offer me a TV contract. Wow. Um, so people do understand the importance of, uh, an Arab comedian, Kind of stepping up and, mm. um, but that's not a role you want to wear as part of your mission. Is that what you're saying? You don't want to be the Arab comedian. You just want to be a comedian. No, I, I don't want people to think that like I'm a, like a prophet or some kind of fucking stupid bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like, that. Like, that's some guy that's trying, has worked, that works very hard, that works around the clock, that loves mm-hmm. them. That loves America. That loves Americans. That loves to laugh, and and that's it. I'm not some famous, you know, uh, guy that is fulfilling his duty or yeah. Um, but you were saying something about um, hostility. Something about hostility. Mm-hmm. 
What? What? I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, uh, plus, I have a shitty memory, so you're working against that as well. You said that um, something about being you know, uh, hostile. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that right? <laughs> yep. Okay, I wanted to talk more about that with you. Now, we're at the 56-minute mark of the show. Um, Ramsey, I'm willing to do another half hour, but I don't know what your schedule's looking like. I wanted to play a song here. Do you have another half hour to throw into the show after this? Or do you have something else on your schedule? I have a half an hour. Awesome. Okay, well, what I'll do then is I'm going to throw in another Bad A song, Your Love, and just give people a break, you know. And then when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the hostility you faced in the Middle East trying to do comedy, especially religious comedy. And I'm going to give you some information about where you'll find hostility in America. Now, I also want to find out how long you've lived in each place and how much you know about each place. So we'll do all that in the next half hour. And uh, so everybody can go You're take their breaks. To Truth on Tap with host Kevin and we're going to go ahead and throw on Bad Ace, Your Love. And everybody, take a break. Go potty, go pee pee, get some popcorn. Doesn't matter. See you soon. Love 
Arabs, I guess we need to ship them on out of here. Uh, now, what am I? If you're if you're a dirty little midget Arab, what am I, Ramsey? Um, you are a giraffe. A giraffe? <laughs> man, why, why you got to say that, man? Why you got to hurt me like that? <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> um. Now you say that you've you actually said earlier something that caught my attention. You said you've been beat up, beaten up. Is that something that happened in the Middle East after a comedy show? Or do you mean verbally beaten up? No, I was beat up by I was I was only five two. Uh, I was beat up by a girl, uh, number two, number forty one. Um, I said I said that uh, if Jesus was famous that people would start calling him lowercase t. Ooh. Yeah. Some woman came on stage and she hit me once with a ring and she scratched, you know, my cheek and then she grabbed the mic and she's like, you have a really big dick. And I grabbed the mic back. I said, um, my dick is bigger than your, <laughs> my dick is bigger than your uh, cheese pie or whatever. <laughs> We're going to have to watch that. Uh, let me Help me with the website. I want to get everybody to your videos. So where are they going to go to find all your videos and your other channels? Let's go ahead and do it all. Let's do the Twitter, the Facebook, and everything here. Um, the Twitter is twitter.com slash Ramsey Swipe, R-A-M-Z-Y-S-W-E-I-S. Facebook is facebook.com slash Ramsey Swipe. Okay. Uh, I have raffles every day. I just give away some champagne glasses. Okay. Uh, right now, I have a Transformers lunchbox and a thermos. Okay. Are you pretty? Are you pretty Googleable? Yeah. I, mm. Yeah. I. Uh, all that. Okay. Just typing. I never repeat a joke, and that'll it'll come up. Okay. So you guys, if you didn't hear what he said, the name and correct me where I'm wrong, Ramsey is R A M Z Y, the last name S W E I S. S W E I S, because my my speakerphone's terrible quality, so I want to make sure that those listening to the show can really get to your sites and stuff. And he and what's the name of that? Um, I never repeat a joke. What's it called? Is it is that just? Oh, it, yeah, it's just it's just YouTube.com slash I never repeat a joke. Okay, so that's the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash I never repeat a joke. Uh, you can find his videos there. I've already watched a few. He's he's rather funny, uh, this short, dirty Arab bastard. Uh, and you should spend some money to go watch him when you can. Now, do you do all your shows in Chicago, or do you spread out? Um, so far, all 59 is going to be on Wednesday. So far, mm -hmm. they've only been in Chicago. I've had an opportunity to perform at Microsoft Studios in Puerto Rico, but I didn't have yeah. enough time. Right. Yeah. Do you do any voice impersonations by any chance? Um, yeah, I, I can do Robert De Niro. Let's let's hear it, man. Go for it. Hey, this is Robert De Niro. For some reason, when I go to Mexico, other Mexicans tell me, "Hey, you know Rob Martin, De Niro." 
Oh, that's, that's, I don't know. Now, when I was in high school, I did a lot of voice impersonations, but I've lost them because, as I said, I left comedy for 20 years. Um, nothing was funny to me. <clears throat> Um, but but there's one that I can do fairly well if I try my girlfriend hates it She just can't stand it when I do it. She'll smack me, uh, but not literally just kind of she'll get that look in her eyes uh, And it's actually I'm in the morning and uh, I'm sounds drunk most of the time And he would think if he were out on the ranch for example and some dirty Arab like Ramsey were out there He'd probably get his lasso out and jump on a cow because he doesn't care if it's a cow or a horse. And you're drunk, you can't even tell the difference. He would chase down Ramsey and hogtie him and take him back inside and probably videotape him and say, Look at this. Uh, I just caught a mule. Because uh, you know, Imus is drunk half the time. He'll say he's not. He'll say he's not. You know, whatever. But he is. He's drunk, and uh, I, I think he's drinking on the job, frankly. I mean, it's just what it appears to be to me. Uh, all right, so there's my Imus. Thank you. Imus in the morning, actually, uh, late in the evening here. That's one I've been working on a little bit, but I know a lot of others, but I have not practiced them, so I would never just try to jump into them. So, yeah, you do a De Niro. All right, man. Al Pacino's hard. I've done. Al Pacino's hard, bro. I can tell you a few hard ones that I've tried, and I said, oh, holy shit, it'll take me a week to get that one if I oh, really I get into it. Oh, mm -hmm. that's pretty easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's my impression of uh, Eminem walking into a Starbucks. Go for it. Hey, I, like my, I, want my, I want my coffee black like I like my men. <laughs> <laughs> lordy, lordy. See, I, I <laughs> that's good, man. Uh, I, I'm trying to think if I can I remember. Another, uh, I had another Eminem one. This is, mm -hmm. this is my impression of Eminem at a concert. Um, oh, I forgot my line. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know if I, I know we just met each other about an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, or like maybe an hour and a half. Um, mm. I mean, actually, I know that you did not read it, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, for people that say that, you know, um, I post too many videos, mm -hmm. I say that, you know, I'm the Kardashian of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> she's from, she's from Lebanon, or so, she's from, from somewhere from there. Okay. Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, was when the old Sharon Osbourne clone threw Kim's phone from a balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, Kim brought a Bentley, and Courtney, with a K, called her spoiled. Oh, Lord. When I predicted in 2007, when the show started, that the one with the cheeseburger face, Chloe, would date Lamar Odom after Kim gave birth to Northwest. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> uh, am I inside of it right now? Am I inside of her vagina? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sometimes you don't know, you know. Where? How do I get out of this nutshell? You're not in a nutshell. You're, you're trapped in a vagina, my friend. Uh, smells like fish? Well, yeah, there's a clue. You know... Uh, <laughs> Somebody save me, but it sounds more like this, glub, 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 when you, when you listen. Uh, yeah. um, so let's talk about some of your future shows and stuff coming up, and our future shows. You know, like Ramsey said, I, I'm a guy who loves the idea of something new that helps humanity at large, and I see the precipice of this show here. I'm standing on the edge of it saying, this could be a lot of fun. You know, having an Arab... American, comedian, a shorty, 
d doing some back and forth with a tall, white, imperialist American. Uh, that could be a great way to bridge a gap that right now is worse than the Grand Canyon when it comes to trust and respect between your typical American and your typical Arab because we're not there and we need to I try to tell people you know when it comes to terrorists and extremists every religion's got them they are in fact on the outer fringe of that religion most Muslims want to live a peaceful life and he's not even a Muslim by the way but I'm just talking in general here uh, most Muslims want to live a peaceful and charitable life. They take charity very seriously. They're not out to bomb Americans. You just get these small sects. That's S-E-T-S, -S -E -C -T -S, not sex. Uh, these small sects that will bring forth an ideology from the Quran, shape it and form it into a hate group, and then go forth with missions. These are very small groups of people. So a lot of people just want to assign Oh, they're Arab, must be Al-Qaeda. Must be Al-Qaeda. You know, that, that's a terrible mistake to make, and it's something we've got to fix. This country is not, was not, and will never be just for white Americans. We are a part of a huge puzzle, and what makes this country so attractive is the salad bowl. It's not really, not really a mixing bowl right now. It's a salad bowl, because we all stay separate, but we're in the same place. Uh, we, we need to get closer and understand that the basic desire to live a good life, teach your kids right, uh, have a chance to earn a living and not be harassed by your government or legal officials. This is something everybody wants and around the world. And uh, we got to bridge the gap somehow. Why not start with comedy? That way, instead of watching news, which can be boring, you get a joke here and there. Plus, you're bridging the gap, you know. So... I hope, Ramsey, that you'll join me and do a regular show. We'll have to, you know, we'll sift through the details, figure out what your schedule's looking like, find the right times of day to do it. I am, I am mm -hmm. in, man. I, I am in 100%. It's good mm -hmm. because, like I said, it's been 18 interviews, and I mm -hmm. don't want people to be, to be asking, oh, where do I go, where do I go, where do I go? Now they could just have one place. Yeah. And I just have to thank you. I mean, mm -hmm. you're the one that got us here. You know, you had an hour and a half ago, and me and mm -hmm. you see eye to eye. Um, yeah. Although you are five, although I'm five two, you're six, seven inches. Um, yeah, we see we see waist to eye. Yeah, if you were a girl, you'd be perfect blowjob height. <laughs> you know, so yeah, but. Um, we, are, we have we have the same passion. You know, even yeah. Salvador Dali, uh, when mm. I went to his museum, right outside of his museum, there's a quote that said, uh, "My mind, my mind is continually a wreck for knowledge." Mm-hmm. There you um, go. That's right. And so, you know, me, me and you, I, 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 you know, we're both after the same um, holy grail or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's a good good way to title it. I'd love to um, be your partner mm -hmm. and, uh, and then maybe, you know, if we ever hang out one day, uh, mm -hmm. I'll play miniature golf and you can play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. See, I could take this short Arab and put him on my shoulders, and he might be able to dunk. So, you know, and we could, because I can't bend over with my back, so I could just get him to do the stuff on the ground, like dribble and pick up the golf balls and stuff like that. We would make a good good combo there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there, but there is, there is, society is begging, not even realizing, they're begging for bridges to be built between people from the Middle East and Americans. America finds itself as a superpower right now. If we weren't, we wouldn't be a big deal. If we were 15th in the world in power, people would be like, who cares if the Middle East bridges a gap with America? But it so happens that we are the standing superpower right now. So it's kind of important that we get along with everybody. And uh, nobody's out to get us, people. Nobody's out to kill us. There are extremists in every religion and every corner of the globe. And when you cast this stereotypical... Uh, uh, attack on one class of people it bothers me I don't like it so I have to stand up and say something about it well this is a passive way you know comedy uh, throwing stuff out there without restraint uh, no no censorship here and you just throw it out there and be real and that's what's going to get people thinking okay uh, you know, if I have somebody in Jordan right now listening to this show, they're going to say, well, this one American anyway isn't so bad. Well, 
you know, that that's a start, I guess. You know, and if, and if we've got somebody listening in my small town, which tends to be kind of far right, a Bible Belt area of Southeast Virginia, and they're going, well, this one Arab ain't so bad. Well, that's a start. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. You know, got to yeah, start somewhere. I and, mm -hmm. I, and I, I really hope people don't think that I'm 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 trying to milk this. Uh, oh, I'm being victimized, and and mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I'm doing this. Because you mm -hmm. know, comedy is walking the plank, like you said. It's it's the vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And uh, um. You know, it, it just so happens that you know maybe maybe here it's the hairy people that that uh. I like to tell jokes. I mean, um, you know, you see, you know, Robin Williams is, is, is really hairy. Billy Crystal is really hairy. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's more. It's, it's important that more and more Arabs get involved and to not be bogged down by, you know, stereotypes. And mm -hmm. uh, and most importantly, um, to censor yourself. I mean, you were talking about censorship. You know, you don't mm -hmm. want to. You know, some arrows they could be stupid and they could say some stupid shit. You know, like yeah. uh, if you're gonna, you know, you have to be very wary of when you're tailoring to your audience because if you say something that you know is wrong, um, it's gonna it's gonna affect that that mood and that person, and they're gonna they're gonna carry that grudge with them. That's right. So you know, a lot of arrow comedians. Um, they, you know, they, I, I don't. I don't really think that uh, they should. They should know where the where the the soft, you know, where the um, the wounds are, you know, and what not to. Um, you know, especially if you're in front of a big crowd and you're on HBO, and you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't try to milk it, you know. That's right. But, you know, I, I I guess I could tell you a couple of jokes I've heard about Arabs. Go for it. Um. Well. One of them is really bad, and one of them is just bad. <laughs> uh, not, not, you know, just in the uh, censorship part, but... Yeah. Uh, so this little kid goes to an adult store, and he's just amazed by all the blow-up dolls on the wall. And the employee comes up to him and is like, uh, I see you like a blow-up doll. You know, we have a large variety. You know, mm. whites, blacks, um, you know, Mexicans, atheists. Muslims, uh, you know, blondes, what, what kind of little doll would you like, little kid? And the little kid's like, I want a Muslim because they blow themselves up. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, you know. that's good. I love it. So I guess in the, in the wrong crowd, that could be, you know, that could be offensive, exactly. but. In, in America, I can't imagine why people wouldn't laugh. I mean, we, we do need to close that gap, and we're doing it. I think, like I told you, I saw one other Arab-American comedian. I, I don't know if I saw him on a TV clip or it was on one of the radio. I think it was on one of the radio things on Shoutcast or Icecast or whatever it is. And uh, I tend to listen to, um, I think it's called Comedy 104 or BCN Online, whatever that is. Uh, it's something comedy network and he an Arab American was on there and I thought this son of a bitch has an uphill battle you know it, really in this country now now this is what I was going to tell you too you've done most of your performances in a city um, you may have a bit of a challenge when you start getting south and step over that Mason Dixon line and get into some of these <laughs> you know because they're so much more conservative and city people tend to be with the times they tend to be more adaptive and in general in my opinion they tend to be less racist uh, more tolerant and have a better understanding of how the world works and have more empathy for their fellow humans regardless of what their race sex or nationality is so you get a lot more of that in the city you may have a different crowd bro if you go down to the outskirts of san antonio you know what i'm saying so be careful man be careful you might just need a tall white dude there to protect you uh, so we, we might have to travel together or something. Um, but, um, yeah, the worst, you know, other than that girl getting offended by the uh, yeah. Jesus joke, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and me, and me, it was, it was, it was, uh, it made for a good viral video, you know, yeah. uh, getting beat up by a girl. But the worst, I, you know, I've been called terrorist. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, I've been hit with the mic. I don't really care. I've been elbowed in the head. I'm Jeez. a huge partner. Um, you know, I don't, no, um, I've been, a lot of black people, um, that have been in the business longer, they, they, um, they say that, I'm not allowed at their club, that they don't know me, um, if I say their name. Mm-hmm. I was literally told that if I ever say that this is one guy came up to me, he's a booker. Like I said, these bookers don't like me. Mm-hmm. And if you ever heard me saying his name, he was going to come after me, and my lawyer said I had to go report it to the police station. Damn. Uh, and he would, you know, type on Facebook, go kill yourself. And, yeah. Um, but, you know, you have to have a good sense of humor. Yeah. You know, I'm both, both on both. Double-edged sword, you know. You, mm-hmm. you got if you're gonna dish it, you gotta take it. And uh, I mean, it doesn't, you know, none, none of those things really. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's never really gotten too bad. You know, like when people will call in or uh, and say that that I lie about certain things. That, you know, that that's just annoying because I'm just like, well, why are you wasting your time? You know kind of budding into my life. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I do take screenshots and, you know, I don't lie. Um, mm-hmm. I think that is why I'm so interested in your show. Mm-hmm. Is that it's called No Lying and, and uh, yeah. I, I just happen to be like Jim Carrey and, and Liar Liar, you know. <laughs> the, goddamn pen, the goddamn pen is blue, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good, uh, man. That's, that's going to make us a good match, definitely. And, <clears throat> and be, you know, being coming from a comedy angle like you are, and me, I'm not a comedian, and I tell terrible jokes. Uh, that'll be just enough. That'll be just enough contrast, I think, to get people really interested in this. And uh, who's to say that this won't become something big, you know, and become one of the primary forms of uniting two people right now, <clears throat> two peoples, plural, that are not trusting of each other, you know. I think it would be a good way to go, yeah, definitely. Like back so. to my dad. Yeah, well, your dad, your dad's a psychologist, and I, I majored in psychology in school, so I may yeah, have... I, I did you? On your, on your, uh, resume. Yeah, what, what, what did you specialize in in school? Did you pick a, same like a... Literature, literature, psychology, same as you. Oh, my goodness, we're like freaking yeah. twins. Uh, one shorty Arab, one tall gargantuan giant white american from nordic descent uh what kind of pair is that we're gonna have a blast man i have no doubt about it yeah it's um you know i, I don't mean to act like i have daddy issues but like <laughs> the, uh, the biggest um conflict my dad my dad it, it, it's cool as hell because um i mean he's just cool as hell so it, it's just yeah. cool as hell but yeah. uh Are you there? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying that my dad is great, and, and, I, and I know that, you know. Uh, you know, when, 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 they're, when they don't have to, you know, parents don't have to say anything. They love you. They, they love you, you know. And so my parents are both great, but um, the biggest altercation I had, you know, now that there's this marijuana legalization thing going on, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's like 19 states. I have tinnitus, and my doctor said that I qualify for a marijuana card, and my mom went crazy. And mm-hmm. It's not going to be legal in Illinois until January 1st, um, but my dad called me once, mm-hmm. this is like three months ago, smoking, uh, because I, I have trouble sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so I opened the door, he's like, what's that smell? And, um, he punched me, and uh, which is fine, you know, I, just whatever, you know, he's trying to help me sober up or whatever. You serious? And, he uh, he punched you? Yeah. And, and that's okay with you? Well, the, the joke was, mm-hmm. the joke was, he punched me and my mom was there and I got, I got in his face and I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is apropos because, mm-hmm. he, you know, he, he is fucking my mother, so. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't believe in chemicals. They don't, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, that's right. And so I should have been a little bit more like James Bond. And, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's okay. You know, to, you know, it's okay to kind of uh, get a slap in the face here and there. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not okay, but, you know, at, at that certain point, you know, I should have stopped coming. And the joke is that, you know, I love the fact that I called him, I got in his face, and I called him a motherfucker because <laughs> you, you can't get offended. You know what I'm saying? It's like calling me Ramsey. <laughs> You're listening to Truth on Tap with That's host funny, man. Kevin uh, You know, I guess if someone if someone called me a motherfucker, I'd, I'd have to just say, uh, yeah, yeah, I admit. I admit, uh, my girlfriend has already had a child. So it's true. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Um, but, but don't call me like they did on South Park, uh, an uncle fucker, because I've never done that. So that's not fair. <laughs> Um, I tell you what, Ramsey. I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're coming up to the end of the show here, and at the end of the show, I'm gonna throw on Scandal Cafe by Bad Ace. I have such a terrible short-term memory. Short-term memory is what got me through college, because I can throw in the information and dump it back out on a test. I was a 4.0 student, but retaining it long-term, not such an easy thing for me. So I'll sit here, and we've only been doing an hour and a half broadcast, and I won't remember which Bad Ace songs I've played. So I'm thinking that this Scandal Cafe is one I haven't played before, but we'll find out, I guess. Now, what do you want to tell the people? Um, as far as, when do you think we should do our show? Like, should we have, they say in radio, you should have a consistent show time. Now, we can, we can flush that out, but can we throw out something for the people to pencil in right now? Like, should we do it on, I don't know, on Fridays at 10 p.m. or Wednesdays? Friday, yeah, Friday is a good time, I think, except for those people that go out partying. They're not going to be listening to us. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Any day. Any day. You pick it. I'll let you pick it. I'll let the short Arab pick it. You know, any day. I work Monday, Tuesday. I work Monday to Thursday. Okay. So Friday, Saturday, or Sunday are ideally cool because I can just kind of go by the beat of my own drum. Yeah. Well, what? We. Okay. I'm, I'm in, man. You can count on me. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and pencil in. We won't say this is in concrete yet, but we'll pencil in a show at Friday at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that too late for you? That, that's actually... Oh, no. Yeah, because that's 9 p.m. your time, right? Or is it 8? No, 10 p.m. Eastern is 9 p.m. Central. Yeah, 9 p.m. Okay, so it's only an hour behind. All right, so it'll be 9 p.m. your time on Friday. That won't interfere with your lifestyle or however you have things set up right now? No, no. Awesome. Um, again, Kevin, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, you know, we just met an hour and a half, and we yeah. already have this, this business going. So thank Absolutely. you so much. I mean, taking mm -hmm. me under your wing. Hey, thank you. You know, without you, you're, you're in a very unique position right now. So, yes, I'm trying to glow off of that light a little bit myself. Everybody has their selfish motivations, but in truth... I think the pair of us can close a huge gap in this country and overseas exactly. between Arabs and Americans. You know, yeah, I think we can and do for it. For the listeners, you know, uh, on Friday, you know, me and Kevin will have had a little bit more time to kind of uh, have a have you know get into the to be a little bit more uh, have more of a rhythm. Yeah, that's right. You know, how we, uh, you know today mm. was. Impromptu. Yeah, exactly. I, I do most of my shows impromptu, but it's when you're dealing with two people, you have to find each other's rhythm and style and how you bounce off of each other, and that takes a little time. It's just it's just never simple. And li like you said, we'll be better on Friday. We'll have a a better idea of what we're doing together, exactly. and uh, that'll yeah. be fun. Uh, do you want to pick a topic for Friday? You got anything in mind, or just go off like we did today? Um, we could talk about how I'm scared of Arabians. Okay. How <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified of Arabians. <laughs> All right, <got laughs> Ramsey, Ramsey the Arab midget is afraid of Arabians, you guys. Did you hear that? You heard it here first. Uh, that, that's hilarious to me. And uh, I, I personally am only afraid of wasps because wasps can fly. Anything that can sting oh and fly... I don't fucking shit 
I will literally shit on myself if uh, I see a bee. You, you uh, have a bee phobia? A I, I little bit. I'll wreck a car. I, I'll go that far. Holy fuck. I've yeah. had a bee fly into my mouth. I've had a bee fly into my sh shirt while I was driving. Oh, no. I hate me, man. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really one of my only phobias. I mean, I've been skydiving twice to beat my fear of heights, and it didn't work. I still have a fear of flying. Uh, I, if I had a parachute as a carry-on, I'd be fine with flying. I, I don't mind jumping out of a plane. But with some old dude up there uh, or, or terrorist up there flying my plane and I don't have a parachute, I'm not feeling comfortable with that. I got the white knuckle grip on the seat, man. So, uh, yeah, we, we could talk about some phobias next show. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, Ramsey, I will say goodbye to you, my friend, and we will resume right. our communication through Facebook and maybe a couple phone calls between now and the next show. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on. I think we have a bright future here. Even if we don't get a huge following, we can do very important work with our little hobby. I believe yeah, that strongly. And we will have a huge following. You leave that up to me. You okay. Leave that to me, and oh. you take care of the rest. All right. You got it, brother. All right. That's, uh, how do you pronounce your last name, Ramsey? Swice. Swice, okay. All right, we will talk to you again soon, brother. All right, thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Uh, that was it, guys. That was Ramsey Swice. Um, th this is important. This is going to be a comedy show because he's a comedian. Um, I'm a wannabe comedian who's not funny. But together with the world news, with the tension going on between the Middle East and the Western powers, how can this be a bad thing? Uh, I don't see how it could be a bad thing. You know? Uh, just a reminder You're here. You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Yep. Ramsey's going to take care of some of our promoting for the show, and uh, that's good. Uh, I'm going to send him the link so he can check out this show. And what I promise to do, but I cannot guarantee you results yet, what I promise to do is work very diligently on getting uh, the show set up to take calls the proper way so that the callers don't sound too uh, tinny or whatever, and uh, getting my audio set up. Now, with my new account, I can use an external broadcasting software like SAM, and I've played around with that. It's pretty powerful. I like it. That will help me, I think, on the phone call angle. We'll be taking calls through Google Voice so that we can do three and four and five callers at once. The number will remain the same, 910, no line. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. And I'll continue to do my other shows. I have a, um, from Truth on Tap, I, I've branched out a little bit to Caps on Tap, so I like to talk about my Washington Capitals. Um, maybe that will gain a following. Maybe it won't. You know, I, I don't care. I try everything, man. I've got like 30 pages I've created on Facebook, and maybe three of them are doing anything. I, I'll just sling shit and see what sticks, you know. So, yes, I'm I'm very familiar with failure. It's, it's just not something that slows me down. I just keep going, and I fail a lot, a lot. And this show may fail for all I know, but we're going to do it anyway. So hopefully you'll get something out of it. Uh, I know I've already gotten something out of this interaction. I, this, this country is starving, starving for an Arab American comic. Starving to under, it doesn't even realize it, I don't think. We want to hate, don't we? We want to hate them. We want to hate those dirty Arabs, don't we? Um, that's bad. That's bad, guys. We got to be real. Human beings are human beings. Every group, every race, both sexes, every country, gonna have the extremists on both ends. Uh, whether they're extreme liberals that are willing to break into animal testing facilities or extreme conservatives that are willing to uh, blow up a plane, you're gonna find them everywhere. And you're gonna find them in equal dispersion. So let's stop hating a 99% of a people and start to get to know them. You can have different cultures and be okay. Why don't you respect their culture? We expect them to respect our culture and just do it. Instead of saying, well, this is how I live. So you're an Arab. You don't live like that. Uh, something's wrong with you. W screw you. That's very immature, don't you think? I think so. I, I rather appreciate different cultures. I think it makes the world more interesting. You know, why, why can't we all be like that? Well, that's, that's kind of the angle I'm going to be pushing from. Uh, even though I'll be talking with this persona of damn, damn that midget Arab, Ramsey, 
who's going to end up blowing up our next plane, uh, that son of a bitch. we got to stop him. Yeah, well, that'll be fun, you know, and he'll pick on me, the, the white American imperialist, and we'll do that. It'll be a fun format, uh, but it's got to happen. And this, this is long overdue. This is long overdue. So, uh, anyway, let's cut it. Man, we've been on for 95 minutes and 25 seconds. I want to thank you for listening to Truth on Tap uh, with your hosts, plural. That would be Kevin Kierstead and Ramsey Swice. Uh, and we're going to throw in for you a song now by Bad Ace called Scandal Cafe. And you're going to love it because you have no damn choice. Peace out. Truth on Tap with hosts Kevin Kierstead.